Hey, my name is Jim Harris. I uh, served in the Canadian Military Engineers. I uh, did 34 years total. And uh, basically I went to about 28 different countries and a lot of them uh, paid uh, the taxpayer's expense, which was very nice. Um, some of them were pretty horrific. Some of them were fantastic. For example, in, in Germany, I spent a total of 12 years there. I got to see a lot of the countryside, a lot of Europe, which uh, people just die to see. Uh, I went to the Gulf War, had uh, a three months stint over there, and then uh, came back from there. And, and very shortly after that, I went into Yugoslavia as a peacekeeper when they were having their war. And that was pretty horrific. And uh, some of my worst nightmares came out of that uh, mm -hmm. episode there. Okay. In Bosnia, I was the Mine Awareness Training Master One Officer. I was a Sergeant Major. I would go around and instruct the uh, United Nations people and the uh, welfare workers um, in the dangers of the mines and the booby traps that existed in the country. Mm. Additionally, on our own time, uh, I started up a program where we went into the schools and by the time I had left, we had uh, instructed about 4,500 children. And that program, to my knowledge, is still going on. So we went into the schools. That was a good day for me. I'd go into the schools and get that program started. In fact, the teachers did not want me to do that uh, for their children because the translator I had uh, had a last name, which was Serb. Her husband was a Serb. She was actually Hungarian. But because her last name was Serb, the teacher said, no, you can't come into our schools. I told them, I said, very well, I'm going to leave here and I'm going straight over to CNN. And I'm going to tell them exactly what you just said, that you don't want us helping your children. And they changed immediately. <laughs> Came around and we had access, full access. Sometimes you have to play hardball. Yeah. My second tour to the former Yugoslavia involved uh, an engineer squadron and uh, and we're, we're sort of placed in a well we're in the, the town of Basoko and uh, you had the Serbs on one side and the Muslims uh, sort of on the other side and uh, the Muslims being the victims of the war because I don't think uh, either the Croats or the or the Serbs really had much time for them so mm -hmm. just put it that way our job was, was sort of to fit in in the middle and uh, and sort of not just keep the peace, but uh, to assist them in any uh, any way we could. If the guys happened to call out to clear an area of mines, uh, that's what they would do. Mm -hmm. We also had uh, uh, an engineer support group with heavy equipment who would uh, yeah. go out on, on tasks for the Serbs or the Muslims. If you did a job for one, they would catch on and you'd have to go do a job for the other. That's, that's it, give and take. And uh, the engineers were in. I'll say the engineers because I am an engineer. Uh, we're kind of in the middle, and uh, you're getting pulled both ways. We were only about uh, 40 kilometers from Sarajevo at the time as well, so I think everybody has pretty much seen a lot of the, the films that were made on the destruction of Sarajevo, and you could just just filter out from there and, and spread it right across the whole country. It was the same way. A lot of the roads uh, were taken out, but uh, mainly by the, in this area by the Serbs, so that the Muslims couldn't access from uh, one town to another, and they wanted to cut them off and isolate them. So one of our main jobs was opening up one of these specific supply routes, uh, roads that through Muslim territory that they were allowed to use, rather than uh, main uh, arteries that the, the Serbs control. Up along the mountain route, it was about 35 kilometers long. And uh, you could see as, as if we had uh, heavy equipment up in there, we, uh, we had to blast the road wider because it was just like a, a goat path in a lot of areas. They just squeezed their vehicles by, nobody in the right mind would drive through this. Uh, we spent uh, about three months up in that area opening that road for the Muslim population to uh, get resupplied in the town of Usoko. Uh, I actually found the sound of machine gun bullets going over my head. Uh, not that scary because by the time they're going, you're, you know, you know they're they're gone, but they could still be coming as well. But you uh, you tend to get out of the way uh, or try to to the best of your ability. 
But in contrast, uh, going over mines and high explosives just were terrifying to me. Mm -hmm. And I had, the, I had explosives and mines go off just within a few feet of where I was several times. So mm -hmm. that, that, that terrified me. But uh, the bullets, uh, not so scary because uh, uh, once they're over, it, it's done with. And then if it subsides, you know, you, uh, you got away with it. The, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Bedouins, uh, for one reason or other, would uh, would dig up some of the mines, and then they would plant them in our roads. And uh, again, this would, didn't happen every day, mm -hmm. but it happened uh, periodically, and uh, that's when I lost uh, one of my friends, and another one lost his legs mm -hmm. uh, on a mine. Yes. And so it was a day that was fairly routine, mm -hmm. and uh, then we were following them in, and they hit a mine, and uh, that's when uh, chaos uh, ensued. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the one fellow was killed instantly, so we couldn't do much with him, but the other two were injured and uh, we got them evacuated and, and to medical care as quickly mm -hmm. as we could. Uh, I was angry. Mm -hmm. I was angry that uh, somebody had done this. Uh, I thought of revenge, uh, but we weren't allowed to do, do that. And I couldn't have applied the revenge to the perpetrators of, of the incident because I had no idea who they were. Uh, and uh, then, uh, then I was uh, called up to uh, draw, draw a rifle and stand guard on the, my fellow uh, comrade who had died. And I did a 24-hour guard outside a little tent with his the casket with him laying there. there and being, being with him and talking to him less than 24 hours earlier. And uh, that gave me a lot of time to think. Mm -hmm. Think about what, what I'd experienced, but to think about who I was, what I was, and what I was doing there.